be free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. Passion and pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood, wound for a cleansing to Calvary's time. There's wonderful power in the blood, there is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. Service for Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you in daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. We would like to thank God for this far he has led us. It has been a year to reckon, 2023. To some of us, God has given us incredible blessings visible in all our spheres of life but to others we have come to the end of the year with great losses to count and because of these losses some people feel pessimism as they approach 2024 but i want to say praise be to the name of god the fact that we still live and breathe the lord has been good to us to those of you who have gone through loss and are still going through difficult times, we want to pray that God will ameliorate your circumstances in due season. And to some of us who have received blessings to count, we want to say glory be to God. As we approach 2024, it is imperative that we go in 2024 with a high level of optimism. We are a people of hope. And indeed, I'm reminded one writer, Sister Ellen White, in her book, Life Sketches, page 196, says, We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way he has led us and his teaching in our past history. We have all reasons to hope for a brighter 2024. We have all reasons to dream big in 2024. We have all reasons to celebrate God's work ahead of us in 2024 and therefore as a people of God the Church of God in Uganda we are dreaming big for the sake of the glory of Jesus our master and as we approach 2024 I thought that I would share with you the Word of God to charge you towards 2024 to bring you into perspective of what God desires to do in your life and in my life in 2024 and therefore, I want to speak to you on the subject I have entitled From Being in the Multitude to Being Among the Disciples. From Multitude to Discipleship. The Bible brings to us a text in the book of Matthew chapter 13. And that's where we will center our reflection as we look ahead of 2024. Let us pray as we get into the word of God. Father in heaven, we would like to thank you for your blessings upon our lives. We thank you for your incredible cover upon us. You have put a hedge around us in 2023. You have blessed us immeasurably. It would have been worse if it was not for your grace. And now, Lord, as we stand at the verge of yet another year, we want to thank you 
that you are going to go with us. Now, Lord, charge us with your word as we go into a new year, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would mind, turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 13 is where we'll center our reflection. I'll read the first three verses and then jump to verse 10. The Bible says, On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. You see, Jesus in all his teaching, he taught people through a mechanism of parables. But when you go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says it is God's desire that all may come to salvation and to the knowledge of truth. And so here you find a very significant oxymoron because in verse 10, the disciples come to Jesus and they are concerned. They are concerned because it appears that God's desire is for people to know the truth. But the way Jesus is conducting his teaching ministry is employing techniques that seem to hide the truth. Because a parable is a device used or is a saying that in essence hides the truth to be discovered. And therefore if Jesus or God desired his people to know the truth, why isn't he plain? So the disciples come to Jesus in verse 10 and ask. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? And I know if you read this text you come to the same conclusion. Because parables are more like a riddle. It takes some mental processing. You have to decode what is being said. And therefore, parables are not as plain as it would be. And if God wants to save people, then why doesn't he come out plainly? That's a key question. And you would be interested in what Jesus responds to this question. The Bible says in verse 11, And he answered and said to them, The reason I speak to them in parables is because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Now this is strange. Why is it that the mysteries of the kingdom are not given to all but to some? And here the, the Bible uses the word disciples in verse 10. In this passage you have two groups of people. You have the multitude on one side and you have the disciples on the other side. The disciples sacrifice what they have. They left their boats. They left their trade to follow their master. In fact the word disciple is simply indicative of a learner, of a follower, one who follows after a master. And therefore, these disciples who had given up all to follow Jesus, Jesus says to you, it has been given the secrets of the kingdom. This is a very fundamental lesson to learn. It appears to me that many can be in the multitude, but very few make a transition to discipleship. And that's why the Seventh-day Adventist Church, in its mission statement, it is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. We are not seeking to bring all people for the sake of bringing them. We seek to draw people from the multitudes to make them disciples. Because to the disciples, God entrusts the mysteries of the kingdom. The word mystery here in the, Hebrew, in the Greek language in the New Testament does not mean something hidden. It means something that is so clear to those who are inside but so obscure to those who are outside. And what Jesus was simply teaching the disciples here, that the secrets of the kingdom are given to those who desire them. They are given to those who will invest energy and time to seek them out. And in fact, when you read verses 13, the Bible says, Therefore Jesus said, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, and nor do they understand. And indeed, prophet Isaiah wrote about them, saying, Hearing will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing will see, and shall not perceive. And therefore, disciples are those who hear and understand. They are those who listen and see also with perception. And Jesus wants his people to move away from the multitude, those who are entertained, to those who will find salvation in seeking. I want to say to you, 2024, God is inviting you 
to discipleship. God is inviting you to a deeper reflection and walk with Him. And He wants you to participate in His incredible mysteries. The, the, the powerful lesson taught here is one that we find through the scriptures. If I take you to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 2, the Bible says, And Moses called all Israel. And when they came to him, he said unto them, You have seen with your eyes all that the Lord did before you in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, to all his servants, and to all the land. And the Bible says, You saw those works which he made before your eyes, the signs and the wonders. And then the Bible says that yet, verse 4, to this day, Though you saw with your own eyes, God has not given you the heart to perceive. Though you were able to see what he did, you did not perceive it. Why? Because those who perceive are those who have interest in what God is revealing to them. And so in 2024, you can choose to be one who listens but never understands. And that is in the multitude. Or you can make a transition and become one who listens with understanding. And this is a key issue in the Christian experience. Christianity invites you to appreciate that the mysteries of God are to those who seek out for them, are to those who participate vigorously into the execution of the same. Come with me, my friend, to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2, there is an interesting call. Solomon is speaking to his young son, whom he wants to entrust the kingdom with. And the Bible says, as he speaks to him, he says to this young man, that if you will receive my words and treasure my commands within you, he says to him, and if you would incline your ear to wisdom, and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, that is understanding, and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now, this is very interesting. The word then is a word that speaks to chronology. When you use the word then, it means that what is to follow must be preceded by what came about. You cannot go ahead until you have satisfied what is before. So Solomon says to his son, he says, if you can cry out for wisdom, and if you can also lift your voice for understanding, if you can search it out as one who is searching for silver, if you can long for it and look for it as a hidden treasure, then you'll find the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God does not come to people who are lazy, and, and that is never the truth. The knowledge of God is given to those who will invest time, who will invest and apply themselves towards the wisdom of God. And that's why Jesus said to the disciples, to you it has been given to understand. Why? Because you left all to follow me. Why? Because you left all to invest your time and effort in the kingdom. There are too many of us who come to church, of course, and we listen to the word. But how much of your time have you invested in the kingdom of God? How much time have you invested in the word of God? How much time have you invested in cultivating a relationship with Jesus Christ? And how devoted have you been in 2020? Perhaps 2024 is another year for you that you cultivate a deeper reflective meaning with Jesus Christ that brings you towards the threshold of appreciating the mysteries of heaven. It is true. God wants all to be saved. But it's also true. God will never give us what we don't desire. And that's why God always persuades us. He desires that we pick interest. He desires that we get interested in the kingdom. He desires that we get interested in our master and become followers of him every single day, walking with him, participating in the activities of the kingdom, seeking to get involved rather than being passive. And that's what brings about deeper knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. I want to say to you, 2024 is a very good year. If you look forward to have a cultivated relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 12 verse 54. Jesus speaks to a multitude again. And he really rebukes them. Because he says to them. That when you see a cloud rising in the west. You immediately say it is going to be a shower. And indeed it is. Then he said when you see the winds blowing from the south. You immediately say. It is going to be a hot weather. And there he is. And then Jesus says, you hypocrites. 
if you can discern the sky, the face of the sky and the face of the earth, why is it that you cannot discern this time? And the reason is simple. These people are agriculturists. Their interest was in the sky because they were waiting for rain or when it will be sunny <laughs> of the harvest. And so they took a lot of time studying the patterns of weather. And so Jesus was saying, if you could only apply the same kind of diligence, the same kind of passion, then you would have cultivated a deeper re re revelation about the time. You would have known that the Son of God is sent at a time like this. I want to say to you, we get as much as what we cultivate. And God wants us to invest time. God wants us to spend some moments with him in the kingdom. It is good to be rich and to get expressively rich. And God wants to bless you and he will bless you. But how much of your time is invested in the matters of the kingdom? How much of it? Jesus says in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 through 13, he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace are not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And then he said, then you will seek for me, and you will pray to me, and I will answer, I will listen to you. But verse 13 says, you will seek for me with, with all your heart, and then I will reveal myself to you. You will seek for me with your heart, and you will find me if you do so wholeheartedly. God wants us to involve the entire heart of us in the seeking of the secrets of the kingdom, in the participation into the affairs of the kingdom. I want to charge in 2024, if you want to get into the depth of the secrets of God, the depth of the mysteries of God, choose to be a disciple. Choose to walk with God closely. Choose to pursue the activities of the kingdom. As the Uganda Union, we have packed 2024 with activities that will involve us in the kingdom of God. Let me talk to you. In the first quarter, we want to seek the face of God and we will have 90 days of prayer. In those days, we want to do what the disciples were asking of Jesus. We want to open every barrier that holds us away from a close relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to seek his face. We want to understand his will. We want to know which direction he would like us to take. We want to listen to him intently before we march out in the year. And so for 90 days, we will be at the altar. We will be praying putting our plans before God, saying, Lord, this year is a year of blessing in the spiritual realm. This year is a year of blessing in all the various ways in which we can minister and extend the kingdom of God. And as the three months are ending, we shall have a family life week of prayer, impact, and every family will get involved in the preaching of the gospel. Every family will get involved in the teaching of the message of the kingdom to whatever family they so choose. And we hope if you did this and got involved, surely by the grace of them to come and preach the gospel, we shall come everywhere. Every congregation will participate in this noble opportunity. This is one of those opportunities in which you can invest your time and energy for the kingdom. Yes, when that is done, we are not finished. We are still coming with another opportunity. If you have not participated in one of those before, you must also participate in this one. This country is a young country. 78% of them are below 35. And so in the third quarter, we are going straight, scarily, and we are pushing towards the young people. We are going to schools. We are going to, to bombard them and how, have them get involved in the preaching of God. They will lead us out and we will support them to preach to their fellow young people. Yes, even that will be an opportunity for each one of us to invest into the kingdom of God, our energy, our strength, and our abilities and, give, and talents. Uh, after that, my friends, as we close the year, we will have the most important department in our church, the children. They will crown the year in a powerful way, and they will also have their week in December, and they will preach the gospel. Families will be touched through the young people, and these young people will be told that the kingdom is theirs as well, and we will draw as many as possible to the kingdom of God. With all these thrusts put together, there is no way in 2024 you can remain in the multitude and not among the disciples. There is no way you can remain a non-participant in this field of the vocation of God. I want to say to you, the choice is ours to either be such that to whom 
God has bestowed his blessing. Those who have heard the voice of God. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. But the matters of the kingdom are given to those who will invest energy and devotion to seek out the will of God. I do not know how 2023 has been for you, but I want to enter 2024 with a deeper commitment. A commitment to give a little more to my Lord. A commitment to get closer to my Jesus so that he might be able to teach me how to be able to navigate the murky waters of life, to be able to teach me how I can handle my financial affairs much better because he has the best financial plan. <laughs> he will be able to teach me how I can lead in my marriage and have a marriage that is fulfilling. 2024 is a, is a year that is full of blessings. If we can only make a choice to embrace a transition from the multitude to the discipleship. This passage of scripture, Matthew chapter 13, has two groups. And Jesus deliberately structured his conversation that way. That he may show his disciples that it is true many are hearing of the gospel, but very few possess understanding. Because understanding is a gift of God. And it is given to those who would develop the interest for the matters of the kingdom. Our greatest need now is to awaken in people and interest for godly things. And that's why 2024 we want to participate in these mission thrusts and call people to the commission of the gospel. And that is to tell them that in Jesus Christ they can find all that they need. Paul once said that in Jesus Christ all the promises of God are yes and amen to those who believe. We can ask all things through his name and it shall be given to us. There is a blessing in knowing Jesus deeply. But you see, sometimes you have to leave your boats on the shores and follow Jesus. Sometimes Jesus will use you wherever you are. To some of us, he had to call us from where we were to bring us into direct line of ministry. But some of you don't have to leave, but wherever you are, Jesus can turn you from being a fisherman to a fisher of men. You can make a choice. And I want to invite you, brothers and sisters, that we can look towards 2024 with optimism. But I also want to tell you that if you can search the Lord with all your heart and with all your might, if you can develop a desire to draw closer to Jesus, Jesus is willing to unravel before you the mysteries of the kingdom. And as you behold the mysteries of the kingdom, something will happen. People will not understand you. Some people may not understand you because they have not yet tapped into the realm of the revelation of God. There are things you will do and people would wonder why you do them. But the, tr the truth is, it's because you have been at the feet of Jesus. You have been in the throne room of God and you have had him beacon you, come up higher and experience the grace thereof. My prayer for you, my prayer for each one of God's people is that as we walk into 2024, let us walk there with determination to shed off everything that holds us from getting fully involved into the matters of the kingdom. Let us get into 2024 with a devotion to serve our Jesus, that when he comes, we may hear those sweet words, well done, my faithful servant. I don't know whether that's your choice. But I feel that this is the voice of God speaking to your heart, saying to you, it's time to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And when you do, then invite another to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Someone said you cannot give what you do not have. And so you cannot invite people to become disciples when you yourself have not yet become a disciple. I want to bring you good news. As many as believed, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. And indeed you are. May God bless you in 2024. May God shine his face upon you in 2024. May God bring enlightenment in your life in 2024. When you seem confused and dis distressed, please look on high. For there is where your answer comes. For our salvation comes from the Lord. May God bless you. May God enrich you. 
may God expand your territories. May God lift you on high. May God carry you on eagle's wings and cause you to become a spectacle for the kingdom of God. I pray for that and I hope that 2024 will be a blessed year for us. It will bring good tidings in our lives. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will be assured of God's company and we will overcome all the challenges that will come our way because he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. May God's peace continue to reign supreme and we will continue to pray for you as you also continue to lift up your voice to heaven for heaven is waiting for your call. Heaven is waiting for your prayer. Heaven is waiting for your commitment towards the kingdom. And once you turn your eyes upward, if you can commit, God will open the incredible secrets of the kingdom to you. May God's love be with you, for I pray all these things for you in the name of Jesus, who is able to do immeasurably beyond all that we can ask. Go in 2024 optimistic. Enter it with determination. Therein is your victory in the Lord our Savior. Amen and Amen. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. For Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you in daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. In the precious blood 